Hello everyone, welcome to the second part of our lecture. So let's discuss about global marketing. Okay, so basically when we speak of global marketing, um, there is already an idea wherein we will be talking about global products. So we have other global products. When we say global products, these are products that are available maybe all over the world okay first let's discuss uh, global marketing what it is and what it isn't so the discipline of marketing it says here is universal however marketing practices may vary from country to country okay so the important task in global marketing is learning to recognize the extent to which marketing plans and programs can be extended okay worldwide as well as uh, extent to which uh, th they must adopt but what is global marketing when we speak of global marketing we're talking about the coordinated activities or integrated activities or marketing activities across multiple country markets so the integration can involve maybe standardized products uniform packaging identical brand names synchronized product okay introductions uh, similar advertising messages or coordinated sales campaign across markets in different countries or in several countries okay like for example unilever so i'm sure uh you are familiar with unilever so they expand their success to many other markets okay and start uh, to compete of course globally so you can see unilever products all over the world Okay, so there are basically two main strategies of global marketing. We have standardization and adaptation. When we speak of standardization, so the marketing mix elements, the product price place promotion uh, can be executed. Uh, executed the same way in various uh, country markets. So the same. Uh, for adaptation, this is the extent to which each marketing mix okay when we speak of your marketing mix the product the price the place the promotion can be executed in different ways in various country market okay so here is an example if you look at mcdonald's so here is an example of standardization and at the same time adaptation so if you notice the logo of mcdonald's or the brand name of mcdonald's it's the same all over the world however when we speak of their product they adopt okay the products based on the country where they operate the business for example in hong kong they have rice burgers okay in india because people do not eat pork in india they oh sorry uh, because people do not eat beef sorry in india they created the maharahamak which provides chicken burger in germany they also serve beer okay why because uh, german people love to drink beer but in other countries they do not usually serve beer in mcdonald's and of course in canada they have mock lobster which cannot be found in other countries okay so this is an example of your adaptation and standardization okay there you go it's an example so another um strategy is concentration of marketing activities so it is actually the extent to which activities related to the marketing mix okay or promotional campaigns or pricing decisions are performed in one or few country location okay for example here uh, for 
McDonald's, they have also a theme for Latino. Okay, Latino. Um, the advertising firm maintains a Spanish language website. Okay, that's the website there. And the website's name is the Spanish translation of McDonald's uh, slogan, I'm loving it. Okay, so McDonald's hopes to gain more Latino customers through initiatives such as the campaign for Latinos. Okay. And then we also have coordination of marketing activities. So this is the extent to which marketing related activities of uh, their uh, marketing mix, promotional campaigns or pricing decisions are executed interdependently throughout or around the globe. So there, here is an example, McDonald's, I'm loving it. Okay, this is a tagline in 2003. Okay, it's, uh, you know, uh, recognized worldwide. Even in the Philippines, we have I'm loving it slogan. So this is an example of coordination of marketing activities. The same promotional activities uh, in different countries there. Okay, another example is Dove. Okay, there. Okay, we also have integration of competitive moves. So, this is the extent to which a firm's competitive marketing tactics in different parts of the world are interdependent. There. Okay. So, here is a comparison of a single country and a global marketing strategy so if you are just selling perhaps your product in one country so you develop your marketing mix your product price place promotion but if you are to sell or you consider your product to be a global product you have to consider product adaptation or maybe standardization or price adaptation or standardization similarly with your promotion and place or maybe you adopt concentration of marketing activities or maybe coordination of marketing activities or integration of the of um, competitive moves okay all right so again here is an example um, of standardization and localization of products of McDonald's so we have Big Mac that is a standard product all over the world but uh, in places such as India okay they also offer uh, potato burger there you go okay brand name that is a standard name uh, for McDonald's but in other countries such as Australia they have a slang for McDonald's. They call it Macas. Okay. Uh, standardization uh, in terms of advertising slogan. I'm loving it. But in Hawaii, okay, uh, there is a surfing hula. Okay, there you go. Etc. Okay, now let's talk about your globalization imperatives. Okay, so basically the products have been traded across, oh sorry, uh, across border throughout recorded civilization extending back beyond the Silk Road that once connected the, the East with West from Sion to Rome on land and recently excavated sea trade route between the Roman Empire and India that existed 2,000 years ago. I'm sure you are familiar with the Silk Road, okay? They use this to travel and, of course, deliver their products or services to other countries. So, global marketing, of course, refers to a strategy for achieving Okay, one or more four, uh, sorry, one or more of four major categories of potential globalization benefit. That is, of course, cost reduction, 
improve quality of products and programs, enhance customer preference, and increased competitive advantage on a global basis. So the objective of global marketing is to think beyond exporting and importing. Okay, let's take a look at your um, global marketing imperative. Okay, let's take a look at your global marketing imperatives and learn why um, products or businesses go global. Number one reason is the saturation of domestic market. So, uh, domestic market saturation is the industrialized part of the world and relative attractiveness of other parts of the world that make or makes global marketing an imperative. Meaning to say, um, there is already too much or too many businesses in one country, maybe, or there is already not enough customers. There is saturation of market. That's why they want to, okay, sell their products to other parts of the world. Okay. Next is, of course, the reason why uh, global market is imperative is because of emerging markets. So during the 20th century, okay, the largest economies and most trade in triad region, okay, uh, such as, of course, America, Europe, or maybe Japan, they have purchasing power of emerging markets, which is, of course, growing. Okay, another reason why global marketing is imperative is because of global competition. So, competition around the world uh, intensifies. Therefore, whether a company operates domestically or across nation or national boundaries, it can no longer avoid competitive pressures around the world. That's why it is imperative that companies would adopt to global marketing okay next is because of increased global cooperation so this is one of the reasons why global marketing is imperative so global competition brings global cooperation cooperation of course advancement of technology and supporting service so advancement of internet communications and transportations okay uh, such as financial instruments for covering exchange uh, rate or fluctuations etc okay now, let's proceed now to the globalization of markets or in terms of convergence and divergence. So, international trade basically is the exchange of goods and services between countries. Okay, there. And international business encompasses all commercial activities that take place to promote and transfer goods, services, resources, people, ideas, and technologies across national boundaries. Okay. So when we speak of the convergence, um, we're talking about consumer needs at macro level. Okay, but it does not necessarily mean that individual customers or consumers will adopt all the products from around the globe. So globalization does not suffocate local cultures, but rather liberates them from ideolo ideological conformity of nationalism. Okay. So, in other words, the divergence of consumer needs is taking place at the same time also. There is convergence and divergence at the same time. So, these are the examples. Okay. So, for example, Polo Campero, a Latin American fried chicken chain from Guatemala, offers uh, products also with Latin service in Latin America environment. Okay, uh, it's also catching up with uh, the United States. 
where in there is of course the dominance of Kentucky Fried Chicken which caters to American customers. However, they also uh, the, the company Polo Campero are also selling their products in the U.S.